by Software Future of Rec Crowdcast. I'm your host, Cameron McLennan, uh, and I'm fortunate enough today to be joined by Mark Whitby. Mark, can you start off by telling the audience a little bit about yourself, please? Hey, Cameron. Thank you very much to you and to Firefish for inviting me to, to speak with you guys today. Right. So uh, very quickly, I've been involved in recruitment since 1997. Um, I actually worked with uh, Wendy McDougall uh, almost 20 years ago now. Um, and uh, that's, that's how long I've been around. Uh, in that time, I've trained well over 10,000 recruiters in 34 countries. Yeah. and um, helped many recruiters to be able to double their billings, helped recruiting company owners to grow their business and scale up. Um, now, my relationship to inbound marketing is that initially I was very interested in studying it for my own business. So um, I've been successful using email marketing and digital marketing for over a decade. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm at the point now where 100% of my clients come from inbound marketing, apart from referrals and repeat business, all the new clients are, are generated by inbound marketing. Okay. So I don't at all pretend to have all the answers. And I think you should be very uh, suspicious of anyone who claims to know everything about inbound marketing because it's a massive, massive topic. Mm -hmm. But in studying it for myself, for my own business, I've invested hundreds of hours, uh, thousands of pounds in my own learning and development in this area. And then over the last few years, I've started sharing that with my clients who are all recruiting firm owners and, and directors. Yeah. Um, so I now help recruiters and recruiting firm owners to harness the power of inbound marketing in order to make more placements. Awesome, fantastic. Um, just a little bit about myself as well. So I'm um, name's Cameron McLennan, working the growth team at Firefly Software. Um, before I started in here, I was working in sales and all the companies I worked for up until I joined Firefish, sales and marketing just didn't talk to each other. We sat at opposite ends of the room and we just didn't communicate. Whereas in here at Firefish, we have the growth team, which is just one team, sales and marketing working together. So everyone's in here today um, to learn about inbound marketing, uh, Mark. But for those of um, the people in here that haven't really heard of it, um, can you give us a bit of an overview in terms of what inbound marketing actually is? Absolutely. So you'll hear lots of different definitions of what is inbound marketing. To me, the, there's two key words that you need to um, understand and be able to apply. One is lead generation mm -hmm. and the other is lead nurture. Okay, so the goal of inbound marketing is about generating warm leads. Okay, yep. now uh, other terms that relate to in, uh, inbound marketing would be attraction marketing or permission-based marketing. But essentially, the difference is that with outbound marketing, you, the salesperson or the recruiter, are initiating that uh, conversation, that sales conversation, um, and you are approaching the prospect, whereas with inbound marketing, they are coming to you. So that is it in a nutshell. Okay, fantastic. Why do you think in, um, recruitment agencies should uh, be investing in inbound marketing? Mm -hmm. So there's three key reasons why recruitment agencies absolutely need to invest time, energy, if not uh, some budget as well into inbound marketing. Um, Number one, as we already said, is that the goal is to generate inbound leads, so warm leads. Um, you know, if you think about all the marketing channels that are available and the different routes to market, um, the holy grail for salespeople is to have warm prospects to, to speak to. And that's what inbound marketing enables for us. So um, imagine that you come to work in the morning, you've got your cup of coffee, you open up your email, and you have um, literally five, 10, or more uh, warm leads that have popped into your inbox. These are people that have requested for you to follow up with them. So just imagine that scenario versus um, the traditional sales method, which I'm not knocking by the way, and I think still has a place, but it is, um, potential clients on the phone. So we need to look at um, broadening our portfolio of, of skills there. So that's number one is generating warm leads. Number two mm -hmm. is that the, the dilemma for recruiters, especially 360 degree recruiters, has always been 
um, this challenge of feast and famine. So yep. it's hard to um, do the business development work and at the same time to deliver on your current job orders. So those two things are always in conflict. So the beauty of inbound marketing is because you're generating warm leads and as much as possible, we want that to be on autopilot. Mm -hmm. What you're able to do is to have consistent, predictable revenue. Let me repeat that because this is the key thing that excites me most about inbound marketing is that you're trying to generate consistent, predictable revenue rather than this feast and famine cycle where you get a bunch of jobs and then you stop marketing and then you just focus on delivery yeah. and then your pipeline dries up. We, that's no good. We want to have that consistent revenue. Uh, number three, the third reason why all recruiters absolutely have to learn inbound is that we want to position ourselves and be recognized as the expert authority in your chosen market niche. Yep. So recruiting is so competitive. You've got, you know, I don't know what the current number is, 15, 16, 18,000 uh, recruiting companies uh, yep. in the UK alone. Plus you have competition from internal recruiters more and more. So if you want to be the person that clients come to, then you need to develop that, um, market authority where people perceive you as an expert and that can be achieved by inbound marketing. And what's cool about that, Cameron, is that once you have that um, personal brand, yeah. then A, you can command bigger fees, B, it's much easier to win business, for example, on a retained basis or to get exclusivity. Um, C, the client treats you more like a business partner in a collaborative way rather yeah. than seeing you as a salesperson um, who's you know a pass that's what we we want to change brilliant i think that's really really good i think as well you know like if you are a recruiter and you're sitting there making loads of uh, loads of cold calls every day um and um you you call a business it's the first time you've ever spoken with them and um, the nine times out of ten the person on the receiving end of that call the, the thing they're going to do as soon as you put the phone down is they're going to google you they're going to look at your linkedin they're going to look at your brand they're going to look at your your website to see how credible are you? How, how much of an expert are you in your niche? Um, mm. Some people would say that um, this inbound marketing stuff is just a faff and that you should just pick up the phone and uh, get, you know, get on the blower and make 100 dials a day. What, what would you say to that? So, look, I believe, Kevin, this isn't an either or scenario, okay? Yeah. Um, recruiters need to be doing both outbound and inbound marketing. Now, outbound would include the telephone, direct mail, um, you know, email marketing. Uh, you know, even if I invite someone to connect with me on LinkedIn, I would say that's an outbound strategy, okay? Yeah. So we need to be doing outbound. The telephone still has a critical place in your marketing arsenal. Um, I, I know you guys are friends of Greg Savage and you're, you're having him, uh, you're hosting him in, in Glasgow uh, very shortly. I had dinner with Greg uh, last time he was in Glasgow and we chatted about this very thing that, uh, the most successful recruiters of the future will have both of these in their, uh, in their toolkit. They will mm -hmm. understand and apply inbound marketing, and they will also possess the uh, classic recruiting and sales skills that are necessary to, to, to be successful. So, you know, I work with a lot of the fastest growing recruitment companies in the UK, and they do everything they're doing outbound business development yep. calls, they're doing blogging, they're doing email marketing, they're doing social media. So anyone who says you should just forget about all this inbound and, and pick up the phone, or alternatively, anyone who says, um, oh, the telephone doesn't work anymore, you need to just use inbound, both of those um, views are oversimplistic. Yep. Um, the reality is you wanna do both. Yeah, great, fantastic. Do you um do you have any specific examples of um like inbound success stories and you know if, if I suppose I've got, kind of got two questions here do you have any examples and if you're if you're watching this at the moment and you're thinking right cool I've read a lot about inbound I've heard people talking about it I want to get started in it you know what would what should you be considering what what is your start point Okay awesome so let me answer the second question first then sorry and <laughs> fire well, the right. there quickly um, <laughs> What I will do is let me just share my screen briefly and I'll show people like as a starting point, there's six steps basically. Okay. Um, and I'll outline this for you. So just bear with me a second. Perfect. Okay. Can you see that Cameron? Yeah, that's good. 
Okay, awesome. So I'll just magnify that a little bit so people get a, get a good view. So there's six key steps. Now, we don't have time to go into this in huge amount of depth uh, right now, but I just want to give people the overview. And by the way, if anyone is interested in really drilling deeper on this topic, then I'm happy to share these slides with you. Um, and I'll even send you a recording of a, a one hour webinar that I did uh, recently. And it was called Inbound Marketing Roadmap for Recruiters, How to Generate Warm Leads on Autopilot. So if you'd like to get a hold of that, then uh, Cameron, would you mind dropping this link into the, uh, into the chat yeah, box? Sure. It's, it's recruitmentcoach.com forward slash roadmap. And because I don't want people to worry about taking lots and lots of notes here, I want you to just to get the ideas um, and I can send you more information for free if that's of interest to you. So step number one is we need an email marketing platform. Email is going to be the backbone of your inbound marketing um, capabilities. OK, yeah. there's there's other channels, but email is the uh, is the backbone. So we need a platform, a way of delivering those emails to all of your um, the people you're connected with, your 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 prospects, your target audience. Yep. Number two is we need a lead magnet. So if you want to generate inbound leads, then you want to have a lead magnet is essentially uh, something that you're of high perceived value that you're giving away for free in exchange for people's contact information. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'll show you a few examples. I know Firefish has several lead magnets on, on your website. So we can maybe take we're, a look at some of those. We're actually um, using this as one of them as well. There you go. Exactly. So a live example of a lead magnet. <laughs> excellent. Absolutely. So a lead magnet could be an ebook. It could be a white paper. It could be a crowdcast like this. Um, it could be a video. Uh, but whatever kind of high value content you're giving away that's of perceived value to your your exact target audience, you're giving that away in exchange for their contact information. So that is the mechanism by which you're going to entice people to join your to give you permission to market to them. We said inbound was like permission marketing, okay? So yeah. we're getting their permission. So number three, you need a landing page. So a landing page is really just the place where they can opt in or they can subscribe or they can sign up to receive your content, whatever that may be. Um, number four, we need a source of traffic. So uh, that could be pay-per-click advertising on LinkedIn or on Google or on Twitter for that matter. It could be social media traffic that you're directing to your landing page. Um, it could be, you know, uh, a joint venture sort of thing like this, where you're delivering something in connection with a partner and you both promote it and drive traffic to that landing page. There's a number of different traffic sources. Um, once people opt in and they sign up to receive your content, then we want to have an automated way of delivering what it is that you've promised them because if you're asking people to sign up for something and then you manually have to email each and every single one of those people, yeah. then we're, uh, you're, that's going to eat up a lot of time. If it's successful, we're hoping lots of people are going to sign up for your information. And so you want that all to be automated. So the client gets it instantly mm -hmm. and you don't have any manual labor involved. Cool. Okay. And then finally, we are going to want to add all those, uh, warm leads, all those, uh, warm prospects to an ongoing lead nurture campaign. Now, the purpose of this is that bearing in mind that if you think of how, um, when in the relationship, people feel comfortable buying from you and actually giving you a job order or, you know, uh, engaging, you know, your services, then it often doesn't happen on the very first conversation. So they're not going to get your lead magnet, your white paper, your report. And well, some will call you and say, Hey, you know, I need your help. We've got an urgent, um, an urgent vacancy that will happen sometimes, but that's going to be the minority of times. Yep. Normally what we need to do is we need to keep in regular contact with those prospects and build the relationship over time, nurture those leads, until so what you want to be sending them is high value information that you're adding value adding value adding value to their business without directly selling um so it's not a hard sell it's a very soft sell mm -hmm. what you're achieving by that is number one you're uh, keeping your brand in front of them all the time number two is you're inducing the law of reciprocity so yep. uh because you're giving lots of good valuable stuff 
before you ask to receive, then when an opportunity arises, when they do need your services, then you're gonna be the first person they think of, number one, and number two, because you've got that mind share, you're in their awareness, but number two, they also feel like they, they know you, they like you, and they trust you because you've been giving them so much valuable info. So Brilliant. does that make sense to you, Cameron? Yeah, perfect. That's really, really good. And I think there's some really good actionable points there and, and things to consider for the people that are watching. It's really good. All right, awesome. So um, let me stop sharing that. I think one not, other thing just to mention there as well that we've been doing quite a bit of work on at this end is that people in, in general are, are far, far further through the the perceived sort of like buyer, buyer's journey before they even want mm -hmm. to speak to another human being nowadays. So yes. the, this sort of stuff here is really, really good because you're, you're building credibility, adding value, establishing authority, and then when that person gets to start to trust you from what you're doing that way, then it's really, really comfortable for them to be able to like say, Let, let's talk. So I think Absolutely. it's really, really, really yeah. good. Cameron, I noticed that a few people are commenting that the volume uh, is yeah. is low. How does it sound on your side? Yeah, all good at this side. Quite a few folk are coming okay. back saying it's okay. Um, Sharon, how are you getting on now? Can you, you hear us? Yeah. I've, I've tested my, my volume meter shows it's going almost yeah. up to the moon. So yeah, awesome. All good. Okay. All good. All right, good stuff. So you asked about um, about case studies. Yeah, some examples so, are always cool, good for people to yeah, see. I think absolutely. So let me show you a few a few different examples. Um, in fact, I'm going to need to share my screen again for this. Um, Go for it. So okay. So here's an example of a client I've worked with, and this is their lead magnet. So I wanted to give people an example of what that might look like. So this is a client called QPL Talent, uh -huh. and they've written a guide called Six Steps to Attracting the Best Finance Talent. Okay, so um, I they wrote it. Okay, I gave them some pointers, but they did a really good job. They've put together this um, excellent bit of content. I uh, recommended a designer that was quite uh, cost effective to make it look really slick. Yep. And so they've put together this document. So this is the kind of thing that, you know, people listening or watching could do as well to, um, to start generating those warm leads is have something that they can give away. And it doesn't have to be this, but uh, this is a great, a great starting point for, for a lot of folks. Okay. So once you've got a piece of content, the next thing, uh, we need, as I mentioned, is a, is a landing page. So let me show you. Uh, now, LinkedIn are pretty smart when it comes to marketing. Are you still seeing my screen, Cameron? Yeah, all good. Okay. So you'll see, if you're looking for other examples of lead magnets, if you look at LinkedIn, if you search for uh, LinkedIn Global Recruiting Trends 2017, that will bring up the, um, the relevant website. But uh, what you're looking at here is their resources page. So they've got, I mean, tons of um, of lead magnets that they're offering. But let's take one example and we click here, get the report. Okay, then it goes through to, this is the landing page. So when, just so people understand that terminology and what I'm talking about. So it's a place where you're driving traffic and then you're offering the lead magnet in exchange for people's information. Now LinkedIn have gone a bit overboard here in terms of the number of fields that you yeah. need to fill out. And um, that's interesting, and I don't know if they've split test this, um, because look, there's a there's a inverse proportion. So the more information you ask from people, the fewer people are going to fill out the uh, the form. Okay. Yeah. Now they may have decided they would rather have a smaller number of highly motivated prospects mm -hmm. rather than a larger number of just sort of curious prospects. So if someone can be bothered filling in all this information, then um, presumably they are a higher pr uh, quality of, of prospect. Yeah. Okay. So I assume that's the rationale here, but people uh, who are participating in this crowdcast, if you create a landing page, I would definitely test it because just keep in mind, you're going to get fewer people. If for example, you ask for the phone number, uh, because then people think, Oh, they're going to give me a sales call. Whereas if you just ask for their name and email address, you're going to get more people opting in. Yeah. So that's an example of a, of a landing page. Now, another little case study um, to share, because people sometimes say, well, okay, that's great for LinkedIn, Mark, but what about recruitment companies? You know, how 
can I use this in my business? I, I'm having trouble seeing the, you know, how we can apply this. So here's a client that I worked with. Um, this guy's name is Rupert Price. And uh, actually, by the way, here's another resource for people. I interviewed Rupert about um, his achievements with inbound marketing because it was quite phenomenal what he was able to achieve. So if people want to go to recruitmentcoach.com forward slash case hyphen studies, so it's uh, recruitmentcoach.com forward slash case hyphen studies, then the, and they don't have to opt in for this. Um, they can just go and listen to it for free. So uh, Rupert won his first, he um, hired me because he wanted to do two things. He wanted to grow his interim desk. Mm -hmm. And number two, he wanted to um, win more routine business. And he wanted to do that through inbound marketing rather than cold calling. So that was the brief. And um, so he was so successful at doing this that he started generating about 25 warm leads a week. Yep. He also uh, developed a really great uh, email follow-up to the people who he'd connected with. Um, and he was getting a whopping 20 or 30% response to that email. And all it was doing is inviting people to have a coffee with them. Okay. But the wording of that was, was really clever. It didn't sound really salesy. So what he's doing is he, number one is, um, generating those warm leads, but number two, he's then following up with them and just, uh, offering to meet up with people for a mm -hmm. coffee. And in this case study, um, he actually gives people the, the wording that he used to get a really high response to that. So he was booking meetings with really senior people like C-level, uh, contacts, uh, managing directors, and so on. And the, the ultimate result of that was he was able to start winning retained business. So in this example, I asked him and I really quizzed him on how he won this first retainer. The fee was 35,000 pounds. And this is the beauty of inbound marketing, Cameron, is that this was a new client he had no relationship with now. And they had an incumbent headhunter that they already had a relationship with. So uh, normally, if you're cold calling into trying to get a hold of a CEO and then you're pitching them, they've never used you, they don't know nothing about you, and yep. you're telling them that they should pay you money up front to, uh, to deliver the search for them, that's really hard to achieve, okay? Yep. Whereas, because he'd already been sending them really good content, and uh, I'll show you on his website in a minute the sort of stuff that he's sending, mm -hmm. um, because we really focus on developing a great blog and sending out uh, good content and uh, that email marketing constantly reinforcing his brand and uh, sharing good ideas with his audience. So okay. because he was doing that, he then followed up, uh, initiated this warm conversation with the CEO. Of a, and this was a big company, by the way. It wasn't like an SME. This was a multi-billion pound company that um, people would have heard of. And uh, he went and met the guy for coffee. And that led to his first uh, retained assignment, which he won against the incumbent um, search firm that he okay. was pitching against, okay? Brilliant. So uh, if you look at uh, Rupert's website, now this isn't the prettiest website and, and uh, he could have a, uh, maybe a update his, his design, but it is achieving the results that, uh, that he needs. So this is an example of a landing page. Uh, he's asking for people's name and email address to download a white paper. And again, I would, you know, I, I would say to Rupert, and he, if he's listening, then he can he can get this critique. Um, I think it's worth paying a, a professional designer to make your lead magnet and your content look really top notch. It's, it's not that expensive to get it looking really good. Cameron? It's quite interesting that you say that, Mark, because we had a question come in there a moment ago um, mm -hmm. asking. So if you are so if you are like a boutique agency and there's only a couple of people inside the business and you're not like a big team with an internal marketing department, like how do you make this stuff work for you? Yeah. OK, absolutely. Great question. Um, so what I would say is that don't try and do everything at once. Like I'm going to share with you some specific ideas of things you can do. But if you try and do everything at once, you'll just get overwhelmed. Okay. So you just one step at a time. And the place that I would usually suggest that people start with is blogging. Okay. okay. Um, so let me show you a, an example of that. So this is another client that I worked with um, recently. Her name is Lauren. And um, let me show you 
what her, her blog looks like. So this is literally a one person business. Okay. I mean, her business has absolutely taken off. Now, what you might notice that a, a pop-up just flashed on the screen here, uh, inviting me to subscribe to her list. So that's an example of another inbound strategy is we visit her website and now, now she, that could be organic traffic, it could be word of mouth, but right now, people listening, if you're not capturing the names and contact information of, of the people visiting your website, then you're literally leaving money on the table. That's, those are leads that are slipping through your fingers. So mm -hmm. we want to be able to capture those prospects. But she had the same concern because she was doing 100% outbound telephone marketing. That was where most of her business came from. And she's very, very good at it. And, um, and I, I still teach that. I, I highly recommend that people have those core skills. But yeah. as we discussed, A, it's time consuming. It's harder to reach you know, key decision makers this way. And, um, you know, and, and you only have so much time. So I said to her, Lauren, you, we really need to start doing the email and inbound marketing stuff. And uh, you need to be sending good content to everyone who you're, you know, is in your network. And she said, yeah, but Mark, um, A, I don't, um, I don't see myself as a writer. I don't think that's one of my main skills. And B, I just don't have time. You know, I don't have time to, um, to generate all this content. Yeah. So what I suggested to her is instead of writing a blog, now she, you'll, you'll notice if you go to her, her website, it's ls-international.com. You notice that she has started writing. Now that her confidence has grown and, um, and she's writing some good articles. But what we started out was, was with a podcast. And I said, Lauren, the things you're good at are interviewing and talking. Okay. That's what you do for a living. So yeah, yeah. let's play to your strengths. And here's an idea. And you're also good at cold calling. You're good at reaching out to senior decision makers. So what I'd like to do is keep emailing and keep calling those like your dream clients. But instead of selling them your recruiting services, what I want you to do is invite them to be a guest on your show. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So think about the difference that makes. Like they've got tons of recruiters calling them. But you get you come at it from a completely different angle. So you say, um, you know, hey, we have this uh, podcast. I'd love you for you to come on, and uh, I'd love to interview you and really shine a spotlight on what you guys are achieving and highlight some of your career successes. And she got a really warm reception to that. So then what she does is she publishes that on iTunes as well as on her own website. And she's got some really impressive people uh, on her. So she's got Global Brand VP at uh, Unilever. Okay. She, she, her, her market is uh, consumer goods. So she's okay. always adding credibility to herself exactly. as well. Exactly. So yeah. she's got Johnson's and Johnson's. She's got, um, you know, Heineken. She's got um, PepsiCo. So all these, you know, senior people with impressive companies. And by using this method, she was able to get conversations with these key decision makers, um, build a relationship, um, and at the same time, she's generating content for her blog, which she then emails out to all of to her growing list of, of uh, clients and prospects. And mm -hmm. that just, that credibility, so the credibility of her guest speakers rubs off on her. So that was the other concern she had is like, Mark, who am I to teach? You know, I don't know more about uh, brand marketing or trade marketing for global, um, you know, consumer brands. I'm not, I, I, you know, I don't have the expertise on that. So what type of content am I going to share? And the beauty of this strategy is that um, the, the podcast guests are the ones who are bringing the content and the expertise, yeah. but their credibility rubs off on, on you, the recruiter. So think of the impact of your prospects are getting emails from you, which, which link back to your websites so or driving content to your website. And they're seeing all these really, uh, key individuals in your market sector who you are interacting with, what is the implication there? People are going to assume that, wow, you know, this, this um, lady must be really well connected. She must be yeah. like really well known or, or have, you know, a lot of reach because these are the people that she is on a peer to peer basis with. So that's just one example. So coming back to your question about where should I start? I'm only a small business. Most of my clients are one person or small firms. I've, I've got, probably the biggest company I work with is still an SME. It's maybe they've got a hundred uh, recruiters. Okay. But I'd say more than 50% are the same audience as Firefish. So they're SME recruiting companies yeah. um, and they don't have a lot of time and they don't have a lot of money. They can't hire a full-time 
marketing person or necessarily even have the budget to outsource this to a digital marketing agency. So the key is um, we just implement one step at a time and uh, email marketing has to be step number one and starting to generate good content that you can share with your, uh, with your audience. I think that's really, really good information. And I think the great thing about that as well is like anyone that listens to those podcasts, the chances are like they're going to be suited to both the client and the candidates because the candidates are going to look up to them and all our clients are going to be looking at them for inspiration as well. So it's a really, really clever hack. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I have another client, um, Claire Ackers. She's in uh, Leeds. She d alternates. So now she, writing for her was a strength. So she likes writing. She enjoys it. She feels she's good at it. Um, but, um, and, and she can do it fast for me. It takes me forever. I think I'm an okay writer and I do write most of my own content, but it just is an agonizing process. So for her, she can do an article in about half an hour. She does one for candidates and then every, she alternates. So she sends two emails per month, one for candidates and one's for clients. So that would yeah. be another way of breaking it up. Yeah, I like that. Um, we've got quite a few comments and questions and stuff coming in yeah. down the right hand side. So we'll just address some of them just now. Yeah, um, sure. uh, Edward says, uh, be a media company first. Really like that. Um, yeah, content first. And you're always going to get people coming uh, coming back to you time and time again. Um, Graham's asking, um, how do you get around, well, it's a tricky question. <laughs> how do you get around clients not wanting to contribute to your content because they don't want to be associated with any particular agency? Good question. So uh, I honestly wouldn't worry about that. It's the same with any marketing effort. You're going to get some people who say yes. You're going to get some people who say, who politely decline. What the key here to this uh, strategy though, and by the way, it's only one of dozens of things you can do. So I don't want people to get hung up on this. Yeah. yeah. If you were pursuing the strategy of getting clients to share content, either via podcast or guest posting. So the other thing Lauren does is she gets clients and candidates to guest post on her blog. Yeah. Um, not everyone's going to agree to it. Who cares? Okay. Yeah. The very fact that you're inviting them separates you from other recruiters. So they may decide. And, you know, you also find in certain markets, there's a lot of bureaucracy around what they can do, like in financial services, for example. Um, you know, I've got one client and he deals mostly with publicly quoted companies and in particular financial services, which is highly regulated. And people are scared to do anything. So um, he finds it more challenging to get guest uh, guest speakers on his on his uh, on his podcast. But um, you don't lose anything by making the invitation. If yeah, anything, sure. it positions you differently, and it is a different angle to approach clients rather than you know um, use my services. So I, I wouldn't. I honestly wouldn't worry about that. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised at how many people will engage with you on this basis. But even if they don't, then there's others who will. Yeah, cool, awesome. Um, and then we've got uh, Darren asking about, um, so GDPR and e-privacy might limit what you can do with a sign-up um, data for your content. Um, this blog, blog strategy could, could solve that perhaps? Yeah, look, um, as I said, I don't pretend to have all the answers and I'm not uh, an expert in this legislation, but um, there's very, very smart marketers, uh, including LinkedIn, who are using the strategies that we're talking about. So. I, I really don't see it as being a, a major issue. Yeah, I think you're getting the opt-in from them and they're subscribing into your blog and stuff like that anyway. So you just got to be careful how, you, how you're handling that. Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, we haven't got time to go into the, the email legislation uh, in detail, but um, if you're, uh, the basic guidelines are if you are um, not misleading anyone with the content of your email, if you have... Um, all your contact information in your signature and if you're giving people a method of opting out then you know 99.9% .9 of the time you're gonna be absolutely fine but yeah. you know so I, I think what I would say is don't use don't be intimidated or use these as an excuse to not get started because yeah. um, it works it's effective it gets results and um, no method works 100% but this is a, a, a great strategy yeah, definitely. Biles came in and asked a question about how do you get candidates and clients from your existing database to subscribe? Mm -hmm. Do you email them a copy of your blog or a link to it and see if they viewed subscribe? At the moment, he says he's got a really, really strong database. Yeah. But people are just sitting there gathering dust. They're not subscribed to anything. Absolutely. A common, common issue. Yeah, yeah, sure. So um, there's a few different ways you can handle that. Um, number one is depending on uh, 
Yeah, I mean, you may be able to do some limited emailing from your database. Okay, so that's one option. They're already in there. If you have the capability uh, of, you know, sending an email merge from a, a data set within your database, that's one option. Uh, option two is um, you could absolutely export your data and import it into a, an email marketing platform. So, um, you know, I believe Firefish, you guys use HubSpot. Yeah, we use um, HubSpot, yeah. So that's a CRM uh, program or an email marketing platform. But that's quite, that's like an enterprise level one. It's quite expensive. It's very, very good. But there's lots and lots of others. So I know Greg Savage uses MailChimp. I use uh, Infusionsoft. There's different price points, so you just need to do a bit of research there. But most of them will allow you to export your data from your database and import it into your um, into your CRM or email marketing platform. Now, just be aware that in terms of like green, amber, and red, okay, for mm -hmm. uh, email-based marketing, red light would be what I absolutely wouldn't do is um, buy a list of data. Uh, or you know, scrape data off the web and and start doing mass emails to those people. That would absolutely be spam. Yeah, green light it, where you're 100 percent safe um, it would be people have opted in to receive your information, so they've given you permission. This would fall into the amber category for me, where you know you export people on your database. You have a relationship with them, so they know who you are. They haven't explicitly told you. Um, you know, yes, I want to receive your newsletter. So some people may say, oh, don't send to those people. I think it's probably okay. As long as um, you very quickly unsubscribe people who say, hey, I don't want to be on this list. Yeah. Um, but just be aware, it's Amber because um, like 95% of people will be okay and 5% might give you pushback and complain. So you have to decide for yourself what you feel comfortable with. Yeah, and I think what you're saying now, they're on really important as well. Like it's about supplementing your 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 outbound efforts with the leads that you get from an inbound perspective as well. Mm -hmm. um, the first time a recruiter like makes a placement from an inbound lead, it just it's like well, that was money for for not a lot of you know a placement fee for not a lot of money. Um, another question coming in there just um, from Talent Emer is just saying that you know kind of going back to the small independent thing again, saying it's a time consuming effort for uh, for a small agency. Um, how do you balance this with the demands of filling your uh, reps for clients you have in your pipeline already? Yeah, great yep. question. Absolutely, so look, it, this is a little bit like um, saving your money, okay? So, mm -hmm. you know, uh, we could, if you think in this analogy, then your time is equivalent to your income, okay? So, you know, when your income comes in, uh, it would be very easy to spend the whole amount uh, on just day-to-day -day stuff that you want or that you need and to not put anything aside. In fact, for many of us, it's very easy to exceed your income with your, your outgoings. But uh, the wise thing to do is to capture a portion of that income and invest it, you know, put it in your pension fund or, or whatever, at least saving it into your bank account. It's a bit painful. It doesn't, you know, I, we would rather spend it all. And so this is the exact same thing. It's just about investing your time. You need to allocate, a, 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 you know, initially a small amount of time to developing your inbound marketing um, campaign. Okay. Yeah. So what, however much is realistic for you, it could be an hour per day. It could be half a day, uh, a week or whatever. In the same way as you would invest time doing outbound business development, you might say like traditionally recruiters, would say, I, I do a power hour, like an hour or two hours in the morning of uh, telephone business development. This is exactly the same. You just need to, I'm not saying this is easy, by the way, so don't get me wrong. Um, it's hard to juggle all the demands in your time. But, uh, you know, if you're serious about it and you feel that this is worth making the effort, then you just need to set aside the time, uh, plug it into your calendar, and it's, uh, it's, an, it's an appointment that you're committed to. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. That's really, really good advice. I think it, it does work as well. You know, um, we're just sitting here, sitting here today, talking to you as, for, as from a business that, that operates an inbound marketing strategy, and we get a fantastic return from it. Coming in, you know, to having warm conversations day in day out is is brilliant, and supplementing that with the, the cold side of it, it, it does work. And as you say, you know, it's not a it's not a two second job, but if mm -hmm. you if you don't start now, you'll never start. So you might as well start to put these put these things into into play. Um, Absolutely. But by, by the same token, I wouldn't recommend that people like get really excited about this idea and then they 
you know, spend all their time trying to do inbound marketing, your job is making placements. And that is what you need to focus a, a large chunk of your time, uh, time doing. So you just need to decide if this is worth doing, I'm going to make it happen. And I know someone is asking how much time do you suggest allocating? Um, you know, there is not a magic number to that, but, uh, you know, I would say half a day a week, you could start getting some good results over, over time. Yeah. Awesome. Fantastic. Great. Look, Mark, I think this is something that is obviously everyone in the comments are really passionate about. Everyone's really interested in, but unfortunately um, we're, we're coming up on, on time just now. Is yep. there anything else that you want to, you want to add in before we wrap up today? I don't think so. Just um, to remind people that they're very welcome to get the free webinar and uh, and the slides. I showed you one of those slides. I've got a whole slide deck which goes into more detail on this stuff. So it's just recruitmentcoach.com forward slash roadmap. And uh, Cameron, thank you so much for organizing this. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, no worries at all, Mark. Thanks very much for taking the time out um, to to come on and uh, speak on this today. It's been really, really good having an insight into uh, Inbound. Um, from uh, myself as well, um, there is a link inside the comments to a white paper about some social selling as well, which kind of follows on from your inbound. Once you get that information through into, you know, into you get some inbound leads, what do you then do with that? So feel free to, to go ahead and, and then download that. It's in the links. Uh, feel free to contact Mark or myself after the Crowdcast as well. If you guys have any questions about inbound, um, you can get us both on LinkedIn and uh, Twitter. So once again, uh, Mark, thank you very much for taking the time out today. Really, really appreciate All it. All right. Thank you, Cameron. Goodbye. Bye, everyone. Cheers. See you guys. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.